Okay. Uh, Jesse Anna Seville here from the kidneyrd.com. I am a registered dietitian, renal nutrition expert. The website is kidneyrd.com, where we take a precision kidney nutrition precision kidney approach. We're looking at the person, what their story is, what all the different pieces are that go into preserving kidney function. It is not the same for every single person and that's a really, really important piece to know. Plant-based is amazing, but you know what? For some people, that's not the right approach. Uh, for other people, doing like really intensive testing can be great, but for some people it's not. So we take a deep dive. Today, however, I want to talk about soy because soy has a lot, a lot of things that we should know when it comes to chronic kidney disease, some huge benefits, but some misleading parts in the uh, food supply and some things to watch out for. Now, I always start day one, and this whole week we're gonna be talking about soy. I always start day one with just some really basic pieces. So, number one question, why would you eat soy if you have chronic kidney disease? There's been all sorts of buzz about soy, too much estrogen, this, that, you know, there's a lot of things that go on with soy. If you have chronic kidney disease, soy could have some particular benefits. First off, right, we already know that the benefits of a plant-based diet are incredible for most people with chronic kidney disease. And within a plant-based diet, soy can be a really, really useful ingredient. It can be chewy, it can be creamy, it can fit in so, so many different ways. And so that's why it can be really, really helpful. There can be some additional health benefits as well as how it reduces inflammation. And there's been some interesting studies on that. So the next question is, what foods are considered healthy versions of soy? Is all soy created equal? First off, let's talk about where you see soy in the food supply. When people are going plant-based, um, one of the things that I see happens a lot is they start switching to fake meat. Gardein, fake chicken, fake sausage, fake, you know, whatever. A lot of fake meat can happen when people are switching to a soy-based diet. Now, I'm not a big fan of these fake soy products. A lot of them contain canola oil, which I really, really don't like. Canola is built or is grown with a lot of pesticides. And as you know, the kidneys are a toxin removal organ, and you definitely don't want to put extra toxins in an organ that is already not functioning at capacity. So there are some things that I do like, and I just want to go through these. So, um, and I just brought two from the grocery store today to show you. So this is just a really basic, um, if you can see a really basic silken tofu. I'm just going to talk about tofu today. There's a lot of soy things. Silken tofu. So silken tofu works really good if you're going to do like creamy dishes. Um, you'll see it in pudding recipes. Uh, Thanksgiving's coming up. So you'll see it in pie recipes a lot. Uh, smoothie recipes. You'll see it in ranch, like dressing recipes. I'm working on a ranch dressing recipe this week that I'm excited to share with you. Um, so that's one kind. Then we have firm tofu, right? Firm tofu can be used more for like kebabs or in a stir fry. One trick that I learned a bajillion years ago is to freeze the firm tofu and then cut it up and then it will get a really uh, chewy texture. So not perfect, but those are a couple different kinds. Other kinds of soy we see on the market are things like this. So when you look at this at first, you're like, oh, wow, that looks super fancy. It's gluten-free. It looks very healthy. This probably costs, I actually bought this on accident. I thought it was a tuna fish pack, but it's vegan tuna. Now, the first ingredient in this is texturized soy protein, and that's what you see in all the fake soy products. Texturized soy protein is uh, a little bit controversial on some sides. People do not believe it's good. And on the other side, people say it's totally fine. It's just soy flour. You take the soybeans, you process them down, they make a flour, you take out the fat. Um, so I am not a big fan of that, except for on some occasions, using a texturized soy protein or a fake soy product. On rare occasions can be good, but you have to watch for extra salt and a lot of extra added ingredients. That's a really, really critical piece that you have to watch out for. Um, I prefer edamame, which is the uh, soybean pods. I think they're delicious. They work great in a salad. They're chewy. Uh, most regular beans can be really kind of soft and mushy. Edamame is not. It's chewy. It's delicious. Um, 
Tofu actually can be delicious. If you have a preconceived notion of tofu, give it another try. Try it in a smoothie, try it in a pie, um, try it, you know, in a dressing. That silken tofu can actually be really, really nice. Uh, tempeh is another one and seitan is another one. And those are some really good uh, whole foods type soy products, which is where we always prefer to say. Um, all right. So talking just a little bit about the controversy behind soy, but why we still like to use it. So some other reason soy has become controversial and people are like, I don't know if I should use it. I don't know if I, if I should or shouldn't, what I should do there is that some studies say that it can cause thyroid issue or inf inflammation. Well, there's other studies that say it has this really high isoflavonoid content and that's anti-inflammatory. And it has this amazing nutrient profile when you look at amino acids and some of the other components to it. Um, so when I did a deep dive into the literature, and again, there's always new stuff coming out. I'm not saying this is 100%. I researched thousands of papers. But when I teach classes for dietitians and I was looking into this, I could only find one little tiny rat study in Asia that showed that there was a decline in kidney function with soy versus no soy use, meaning they were thinking soy was having some sort of a problem. Otherwise, I've seen a lot of papers where they're showing benefits of consuming soy with chronic kidney disease. Oh, I have one of my little ones that just joined me. Anyways, so that's the last part that I want to share with you. Um, we do like using soy, like I said. I think it's something to give a go at. We're going to talk about some myths, some more cooking ways you can use it this week, and I hope you'll join us. So uh, you can follow us at thekidneyrd.com. We're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all of those different places you can watch us. You can hop on over to my website and download our mini nutrition guide, which talks about the eight opportunities for preserving kidney function a really, really critical piece of, um, of uh, preserving your kidney function is knowing all the different things to do, not just protein, not just sodium, but there's other things that you want to look at. And then we teach a class on that once a month for those uh, that are interested. Anyways, that's it for now. And we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.